During the lecture, you spoke about the ego focusing on the experiencer. Yes. When a student gets to the point that they are aware of the moment a desire comes to fruition, and they, re and they recognize the experiencer being the source of that, what's the student to do? To surrender the desire, or...? Uh, no, you just become the witness of the experiencer. The experiencer is, uh, tries to milk everything to ensure its own survivor. Uh, you become the witness of the ego doing that. You become, the, you become the witness of the observer. So you're detached then from subjectively identifying yourself with the experiencer. Ordinarily the mind thinks, well, I am that which is, you know, experiencing. Instead of, I am the consciousness, the observer, the witness. Uh, of the phenomena, so it's it's uh, you're more detached when you see yourself as the witness observer. Then how do you know that you're the witness observer? The witness observer then is coming out of the consciousness itself. It's because of consciousness itself that you're capable of having a witness observer, much less an experiencer. To have no thought about what goes on. Uh, it comes about through a contemplative lifestyle so that you end up thinking about a thing only if you choose to think about it. If you say, well, I think I'll think about this, then you think about it. But you don't think about it, uh, you know, against your own choice. Huh? So that comes about as a contemplative lifestyle where you, the field is aware of the content of the field but it's aware only at, out of its being a field, not out of its being a particular you. Just as what's being said now is being witnessed. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't. I hear it the same time you hear it. So, the speakingness happens of its own spontaneity as a speakingness because that's an attribute uh, that you relearn. Yeah. After you lose the ability to relate to the world, you know, slowly over time you, you relearn, and I call that uh, persona. And there's an aspect of consciousness which then learns to interact with the world and converse with it, and know which streetcar to get onto and all that. But uh, it has nothing to do with who you are. Uh, you're the witness. It could be just somebody else in another body. It, uh, it doesn't have any personal, personal meaning anymore. Eh? Therefore, whether you're good or bad, you know, is the other person's problem because it's their perception and it's got nothing to do with your own reality, which is beyond good and bad, et cetera, things that, you know, you don't know who they're talking about. So as I say, when those, when that state first uh, came, uh, emerged, I, I would see people talking to, talking to this body and I couldn't figure who they're talking to. And then what the hell is he talking to? <laughs> and I realized they think it's me. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't figure out who they're talking to. Who are they talking to? Because the body had nothing to do with, with who I am, or even where I was, you might say. The consciousness may be here, and, and here's Doc's body over here, and there's people are talking to this thing here. What the hell are they talking to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like out of body, I'm here, and they're talking to this body here, and I said, "That is certainly a strange phenomenon." So <laughs> it took a while <clears throat> to realize that they're talking uh, to that, and uh, th that is uh, what they assume to be you. So then you learn how to, you know, as I call it, say, via the persona, uh, become that entity to the degree that is necessary in a social interaction. If there's no necessity for social interaction. There's no necessity to own that persona. It would just be excess baggage, like you don't need a raincoat if it's not raining, you know? <laughs>